Rooftop solar panels will produce more electricity than all of Australia needs within decades. Around 30% of households already have solar panels installed and that number is increasing. Tristan Edis is the Director of Green Energy. He joins us now from Melbourne. Tristan Edis, welcome. So is Australia one of the top places in the world in terms of uptake of roof rooftop solar and why is that? Yeah, it is. Uh, there are a few reasons. One, we've got good sun. Uh, the second is we have a very efficient uh, industry in installing solar. So, for example, the, the cost of a solar system in Australia is about half what it is in the US. Um, and also we have quite high residential retail electricity prices compared to many other countries around the world. And so to what extent is that going to grow over the next 30 years? Look, at the moment, solar PV, rooftop solar PV is already uh, a greater amount of capacity than coal. Um, but really within the next decade, it will also surpass the combined capacity of not just coal, but gas and hydro as well, and uh, get to a, a level of scale where in the middle of the day, when it's at its peak generating, it uh, will get close to supplying entire, the entire grid's electricity demand. So if it's going to continue to grow strongly, what are the possible benefits for Australia apart from people with the panels saving on electricity? Well, the people that don't have the panels actually benefit uh, to, to a very large degree because they end up seeing very low electricity prices on the wholesale market. So for example, South Australia, which has the highest rate of rooftop solar uptake, has been experiencing wholesale electricity prices close to zero on average in the middle of the day. And that then gets passed through to other consumers that don't have solar. So actually other consumers are significant beneficiaries of solar. Um, but uh, in addition, there will be some changes with the structure of electricity tariffs, such that um, the retailers can charge lower prices in the middle of the day. Unfortunately, they will probably charge higher prices in the late afternoon, evening, but that will be a way of also passing through those benefits to, to other consumers. But the, the biggest thing that we need to do to really truly exploit this opportunity of low cost uh, solar and rooftop solar is we need to roll out uh, both batteries um, and also uh, energy consuming devices like uh, electric water heaters that are timed to consume electricity in the middle of the day. So we can exploit this huge amount of what will be um, a, a substantial excess of, of cheap energy in the middle of the day. So we need to be smarter with our, our energy usage as well and encourage greater um, shifting out of gas, for example, into electric appliances and making sure that those appliances are timed so that they consume most of their electricity in the middle of the day. And what's the availability and the efficiency of those batteries now and how is that going to improve over the coming decades? Well, there, there was tightness in supply around a year ago um, and that has substantially freed up. So um, demand for electric vehicles was, was stretching exceeding supply around uh, a year ago. Um, to two years ago, but that has now been largely relieved. And it wasn't because demand for electric vehicles was not growing. Demand for electric vehicles grew by 40% last year, but we were able to expand supply far faster, which is fantastic. And that means prices are now finally coming down. Um, and that should mean that there's also um, plentiful supply of uh, energy storage for households, not just electric vehicles. Now, that was a, that was a challenge. Uh, 12 months earlier, but it's now freeing up. But there's still a lot of room for progress in reducing the price of batteries, and they still need to come down substantially in price before they can become uh, an economically viable and attractive option for households to lower their energy bills. And um, I think really we need to approach batteries just like what we did with solar. With solar, it benefited substantially from government subsidies, both here in Australia, but also overseas. That helped drive economies of scale, helped drive experience with installers and the industry itself, such that we got quality up and prices down and we can do the same with batteries. So could Australia feasibly be run off rooftop solar without any other generation or will there always be the need for other forms of industrial scale generation? Yeah, no, there will be. There will be a need for, for other sources of, of electricity, in particular 
wind, but there will be other things that we'll need for quite some time to come. You know, we'll continue to need some level of, of gas-fired generation, although its usage is substantially declining over time, but it plays a little bit of a, a sort of a balancing and a backup role. Wind is, is very important. Obviously, overnight, there's no sun, so that's very important. You can't just do it all with batteries. Um, that would be probably a more expensive option than also complementing it with wind, and also hydro will continue to be very important into the future using both the uh, existing capacity and potentially also some new pumped hydro but the existing capacity can be more cleverly utilized over time so all of those things are needed but really that the most urgent thing is we've got to drive the usage of i think in particular household batteries government are putting a lot of effort and support into large-scale uh, batteries large-scale wind but we we really not taking advantage of the opportunity that we have with uh, household solar being stored, we could actually really lower the cost of energy for everyone if we were to roll out um, batteries at the sort of household scale as well. Yeah. And But the price of the rooftop panels isn't going to come down any anytime soon? Well, the rooftop panels are, 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 have come down considerably in price over time. Batteries are now starting to come down in price significantly now that supply is caught up with, with demand. Um, and we expect that that will continue into the future. But we need to see a very large reduction, really a halving in, in household energy storage or battery storage for it to start to become, I think, an attractive financial option. And that's why I think there's a, there's a role there for government for the next few years to help accelerate that process and support households and drive the technology down the cost curve, just like what they did with solar. All right. Okay, Tristan Edith, thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you.